Hi everybody, welcome to my fifth torsional bar video. In this video I'm going to be solving the problem you see here. and We're going to determine what the diameter of this hollow bar has to be to resist the same torque with the same maximum shear stress as the hollow bar. Then we're going to find the mass of the ratio of the hollow bar to the solid bar. If you want to know something else about torsional bars, feel free to check out any of my other torsional bar videos. So this is a very common engineering question. All right. So let's say in a given application you have this solid bar doing something. So let's say it could be in a turbine and it's twisting. All right. And we want to make it more efficient. And more efficient usually means less cost for the same amount of work. All right. And basically in this question we're asking what does this diameter here have to be? to do the same job as this one here. All right, now, in reality, you probably solve the question the other way, where you're given this diameter, and, and then asked to find you know, some ratio of these two diameters, but it's essentially the same problem. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. So this bar here, this is the one we have, and we want to find the equivalent diameter D, so it can resist the same torque and not exceed any of the same maximum shear stress because we're going to assume that we're going to make it out of the same material. All right, so you're twisting this bar, you're twisting this bar. What does this diameter here have to be to make this one do the same? All right, so we know that shear stress, all right, because it's resist the same torque with the same maximum shear stress. So tau is torque radius polar moment of inertia. All right, if we want them to be the same, we need to equate those two. So we're going to need to say T hollow is equal to T solid. And these are going to have to be the maximum values of each of these. Okay, so for the solid one, it's maximum if we take the radius to be the outer radius or D by two. For the hollow one, it's going to be maximized when we take the very outer piece here, all right, so D2, or D2 by 2 to get the radius. All right, so let's keep that in mind. So let's uh, go through here and plug in this equation with these values. Okay. So let's just go ahead and simplify this. The first thing is resist the same torque. All right. So assuming that the torque is just applied at the very end, at any point along that bar, whether it be hollow or solid, the internal torque is going to be the same. All right. So we can say the hollow, the torque in the hollow one or torque in the solid one, they're the same. So they go away. And now I'm just going to flip this equation around because it'll make our life easier later. All right, so some quick algebraic work here. Okay, there we go. Now let's go ahead and find out what these are in terms of the diameter because that's the only variables that we know. So I'm going to solve this exclusively in terms of variables. We'll plug the variables in at the very end. Okay, so we can say the radius for the hollow one, radius for this one, all right, we need to do that in terms of their maximum values. Okay, so the radius for the hollow one, its maximum value is going to be at D2, which we already said before. So we can say RH, or the value we're going to use for that, is going to be R2. All right, that's going to maximize this even though we flip this over, all right? We're still technically using this equation. It's just we rearranged it. That's diameter two by two. And the radius for the solid is gonna be the diameter of the solid, the one we want to know, by two. Okay, now the polar moment of inertia for the hollow one is going to be the moment of inertia of the outer one minus the inner one. Okay, 
So we're going to write that as pi by 32. All right, so instead of going through the steps of having a radius and then plugging it back in later on, I've just taken the liberty of, because this is actually pi by 2 radius to the 4, but you plug in diameter by 2, factor out the 2 to the power of 4, and you get this. Okay, and then j for the solid is simply going to be pi by 32 d to the 4th. All right, so these are the components that we need to solve this equation that I have dotted off here. Let's go ahead and plug those in. All right, there we go. So I have uh, flipped over these symbols here. So the pi by 32, I've put the 32 in the bottom. The d by 2, I've flipped the 2 up on the top. All right, I'm sure you can handle that. So let's go through here and uh, simplify. So of course, pi on both sides, gone. 32, 2, 2. And this goes like this. All right, so let's just rewrite this again. Okay, and now further simplifying this, we can write All right, and this is our final equation for determining the diameter of that solid tube. So now we can go ahead and plug in our values for each of these. All right, now notice they're given in millimeters. Normally, I would switch them over to meters, all right, just to make sure it's all okay. We're not getting some sort of funny units, but in this case, the only units that we have, or the only variables we have, are measured in millimeters. So if we plug in millimeters here, it'll all come out in millimeters as well. All right, okay, the D1 is 80, so let's just go ahead and plug this in. All right, so there we go. This is a pretty reasonable answer. All right, so you should expect your answer to be somewhere between these two radius, radii, I guess, because this diameter should be smaller than that, and then neither should it be bigger than that. Either of those cases won't make sense. So it's going to be somewhere in between. This 83, that gives us a, you know, that's a reasonable value. And that's what you always want to do in these sort of problems. Think, what's the reasonable value? And if you get like 20, you know, that's not going to be reasonable. So try to think of what it should be and then see how close your answer is to what you think it should be. All right, so now for the interesting part, let's find out the ratio of their masses because this is where the efficiency comes in if you're needing to build these. All right, specifically, if it's say you're manufacturing turbines and you're building 10,000 of these per year, the metal savings by not putting this core in could be, you know, astronomical. So let's go through and calculate that. So, we need to find the ratio of the masses. Now, we're not giving any information of the masses at all. Okay, so we're going to need to do some uh, algebraic manipulation here. So this is the ratio we want to find. Okay. And a rule of thumb I give for myself is if you're not given a variable, then it's going to cancel out somewhere. So let's just express these masses in terms of variables. 
products are going to cancel each other out when we divide them through. So you know that mass in general is density times volume. All right. Now in our case for a bar, we say mass is density cross-sectional area times length. All right. So let's go through and uh, you know solve for mh. So mh is the density times the area. So the cross-section area of the you know the hollow one is going to be pi r squared from the outer. That's two minus pi r squared from the inner. All right, and I was still typing this by length. Okay, so now I'm going to factor out the pi, and I'm going to replace r2 and r1 with d2 and d1, and then factor out the four. So we can say mass of the hollow is equal to rho pi by four. Move the l over here. D two squared minus d1 squared. All right, there we go. Now let's do the same thing for the mass of the solid. We know it's density, area, length. So it's going to be density, area. That's just the one diameter d. All right, so that's pi by four d squared. There we go. Now, check this magic out. If we put mh over ms, all right, so this bit here, over this bit here. Let me just write that out for you. Okay, now, all right, this is uh, very convenient. We want all of these terms cancel out, all right? Rho gone, pi by four, L. And we're left with just diameters, all right? The things that we know. So let's just make a final expression here. All right, there we go. So to find a ratio of the you know the mass savings in our specific case we're just going to go ahead and plug in the value so d2 was 100 d1 was 80 d we just found to be 83 so let's plug those in and solve Okay, so it's 0.51. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, say an mh over ms is 0.51. So we can rewrite that as saying mh is equal to 0.51 ms. All right? Or if we do the hollow one, it's only 51% of the mass of the solid one. All right? So it's pretty well twice as. Uh, you know, mass efficient. All right, and that's actually pretty significant. So basically, what we said is this bar here can do the same job as this one with only half the mass. So that's some huge savings. All right, so I hope this video helped you guys out, and we'll see you in my next torsional bar video.